نجيب الدعاء اللهم اني اعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي جزاكم الله خيرا فور ذا انفيتيشن فيرست اند فار موست is alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen we are all talking to each other it is ramadan it's second day allah gave us life we are seeing it we are smelling it we are seeing the breeze of it so i hope inshallah everyone is feeling what i am feeling right now it's 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 a beauty that we all have to be very grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen and number two is i do apologize we had as always allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test us last minute we had a real issue with the microphone so we had to change everything so please forgive us it, alhamdulillah allah made it uh, happen we had a plan b and a plan b actually it was plan c and finally plan c um uh, worked alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. it's my honor and pleasure to be part to speak to all of you i don't know where are you in which part of the world but i know there is some of you are in england because this is cambridge university in england i'm sure there's some people in the states and maybe everywhere else in the world this is the beauty of having this technology. We have to be very grateful to this technology. And I always, and don't, uh, yeah, it will be nice if everyone tells me, where are you from? It really will, will it, it makes me feel the, the, um, the sisterhood we always talk about. And in spite of all the difficulty we are going, Alhamdulillah, we have this internet. And one of my duas, you may laugh, I was like, Ya Allah, please don't let Corona comes to the internet because it really was helping us and it still is helping us, alhamdulillah. And I hope and pray everybody's Ramadan is going very well, even more than what is expected. And it's very interesting, uh, subhanAllah, that when um, the uh, Islamic, the uh, Cambridge University Islamic Society in invited me to speak, what's the same topic that actually we have our Ramadan planner. We wanted to plan something. It's so interesting for Zana, isn't it? Um, we were actually wanted to do uh, something about to, to a short reminder to everybody that is not too complicated. It is something simple that everyone can listen, apply, and practice it. Not too complicated, not too sophisticated. And subhanAllah, this came to my mind. This Actually, this is the, pla the planner. I'm showing it to you. And you can easily get it is by just go to um, um, our website and there is a, you can register. Once you register, it's a free, you will get it. And then every day on our uh, media, on our Facebook and on our YouTube channel, there is a small, um, video comes with it so basically it's day by day what what action i will do that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love me so we are gonna go with you through uh, the actions that allah loves that i'm gonna do daily we, we we chose 30 actions and inshallah by the end allah will love me and then subhanallah this is the same topic that you guys wanted and it's it's beautiful i mean there is nothing more beautiful and I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. There's nothing more beautiful than the fact I know for sure that Allah loves me. It's not the claim. It's not, I mean, all of us can claim, right? We all claim we love Allah. And this is very easy because everybody can claim what they want. But I cannot say Allah loves me and I am sure. Number one, who I am, this is how I say to myself. And I'm not saying to anybody, I'm talking about myself, who I am that Allah loves me. You have to imagine, right? For example, always when you want to um, learn something, bring examples from reality. So here you are, you say, for example, this is the most popular person in your community. For example, right? Most popular person in your community. And you say, this person, she, I am her best friend. I was like, whoa, she chose me. And you're going to say, wow. People will say, wow, what's so special about her? That she chose you. That's a human being. Now look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will love me or will love you, love us? We can claim it, but reality is very difficult. So that's the first thing. The concept of love, number one, the concept of love and then the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have this relationship with Allah, the relationship of love. We normally, most of us, grew up with one relationship. 
don't do that, you will go to the hellfire. Allah will be upset with you. Allah will not give you fear. And we need the fear. We need the fear. We are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like our children with us. You love them, they love you, but also they have to be afraid from you. Otherwise, they will not obey you. So here I am. My relationship, I'm going to do it, inshallah, through this talk. I'm going to take you through and through the whole Ramadan by practicing these small things, daily small actions, very small. I will feel that my relationship with Allah is closer and the feeling is feeling of love you are not afraid you are in love and you all of you mothers especially you know this feeling it's the feeling of being in love with someone and this is my goal this is my goal and i will share with you as we go the dua is of rasul about he asking allah to love him so number one when we start let's be very careful when i claim or you claim, we claim, Allah loves us. That's a huge claim. I say, and I didn't say claim, I say, I love Allah. And Allah will say, okay, show me. Show me, where is your love? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put that in Surah Ali Imran. And some of you may be familiar with it. In Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and the verse is 31. I'll translate and I want you to feel it with me. Say, قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ If you, if you, تُحِبُّونَ Allah, If you love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ Follow me. This is a Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam saying. Say, if you really love Allah, follow me. Follow Rasulullah, his sunnah, what will happen? Yuhbibakum Allah. Allah will love you. Yuhbibkum Allah wa yaghfir lakum dunubakum. I'm not the only gonna get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or I'm sorry, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am gonna get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and forgiveness of my sins. Wallahu ghafurun rahim. So, number one, number one, the concept of love is in the Quran. I need all of us to learn this. The concept of love, like there is concept of Jahannam, there is concept of the hellfire, there is a concept of love, this relationship special with Allah. And here, the one I just shared with you, is how Allah loves me. Now, Allah in the Quran, and this is what the planner will, will give you, and I will share some quickly with you. What are the things I do and you do and Allah will love me. Being a Muslim itself is not enough. Interesting. Allah did not say, in Allah yuhibbu al-Muslimin. And however, Allah loves those who worship him only. In Allah la yuhibbu al-Kafirin. Allah does not love those who kafir, reject him. So the concept of love in the Quran, now this is the month of the Quran. This is how we will learn. The month of the Quran, the Quran, when you are reading every day, once you get to the word yuhib, love, or la yuhib, doesn't love, underline, underline, or write it in a note. Usually next to it, there is a character. There is an action, or don't do it. Meaning, this in the Arabic language is very common, is that they say it is by it or the opposite of it. So Allah will say, in Allah yuhib, Allah loves, or in Allah la yuhib. So these, you, you, as you are reading your Quran, and in every, almost every chapter in the Quran, every day, there is one of these, sometimes more actually. Allah loves, or Allah doesn't love. What I and you need to do, I need to know these, the one he loves. I need to know the one he doesn't love. I am going to do my best. Number one, I'm a physician, so I'm going to speak with you in medicine. Number one, I have to diagnose myself. Look inward. Don't look at people. Look at yourself. Look inward and see, does any of the characters Allah has, Allah wants me to be, to, so he loves me. Do I have it? 
Do I have it? In Allah, yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loves those who are patient. Am I? In Allah, yuhibbu muhsinin. Allah loves those who are good doers. Am I? And not a claim, not a claim. It's an action, action. And this is the small videos we are sharing with you every day. What does it mean? Like this morning, we shared, I don't know if they shared it yes, yet, but it is about a tawbah. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. This is in Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow. And the verse is 222, easy to remember. When Allah talks about menstruation, he ended up by Inna Allah, verily Allah loves he, Subhana, capital H, yuhibbu tawabin those who are in constant repentance, constant. Pay attention to this. It's not a one-day action. It's not only in Ramadan action. This is in all. Yuhibbu tawabin Pay attention to the way Allah use it in, in the Quran. The, 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 the word in which form he use it. at tawabin meaning they are in constant tawbah. In constant tawbah, meaning I will make sins, you will make sins, but he wants me to go back immediately to him, ask him, Ya Allah, please forgive me and change it. So look in this every single day. Again, with the with the planner, you put yourself, and if, if you don't have the planner yet, for example, look at this, right? This is was yesterday, right? Or this is actually today, I'm sorry. You have tawabi. And we put you, this is the verse, and under it here. You have the actions, actions. This is what I want you to do. And do more. You know, we chose only 30 because of the days of the Ramadan. There is way more. And there is also some from the Sunnah. So this is number one step. I'm going to go back a little bit. And let's come and talk. What does the word love mean? I mean, I wish I am with you in public. Then I'm going to ask you and you will answer me. But unfortunately, but alhamdulillah. Love in the Arabic language, and amazing the beauty of the Arabic language. We use the word hub, ha and ba, only two letters, ha and ba. And the only difference, this word has five different meanings by only changing the vowels, only changing the u or e or a. So five meanings, yes, exactly. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, farzana. Jazakillah, khair. So we have these, see it? She put it there for you. If I am going to say number one, number one meaning, this is linguistic meaning, right? Origin of it, when the teeth, teeth are white, shiny, and bright. White, shiny, bright, and pure. They, they call it hababul asnan. That's one. That's one. Number two, number two, is being obvious. It comes out, it shows off, can't hide it. Can't hide it. That's another meaning of the word. Now think, connect this with the love, the feeling. True love, not claiming, true love. So number two, obvious, it, it shows up, I cannot... I cannot hide it. Number three, number three. And this is if you put fatha on the ha, ha, fatha, and you put shadda on the ba, habba, they call it. Habba, no ha, ha, ba, only. Habba. Tayyib, what does that mean? What's it? They say habba al ba'ir, the camel, habba, basically stayed firm. Steadfast. Steadfast. Now pay attention. This is love. This is all the same word. So three meanings. Pure, bright, obvious, constant, stable. Are you with me? Are you with me all? Doesn't change. Doesn't change. And number four. It says, Al-lub or hubba or habba. Meaning, meaning the seed, the inner seed of something. Inner seed of something. So it goes way deep. Way deep. Way deep. Number five. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. If you only put kasra, ya farzana, put 
kasra under the ha, okay, and shadda on the ba, but put dhamma on the ba, hibbu. I'm sure all of everybody after this, we're going to go and learn Arabic. Please do. Please do. Because it comes beautiful. The, the deen, our Islam becomes even more beautiful when you know the language. Hibbu. And this is very common. Some parts of the world still have it. The sister who is with us from India. It's called hib. And we still have it also in the Arab world. It's actually a clay container that people put water in it. They didn't have filters and no fridge. They put the water in it, right, to protect it. And they call it hib. Same word. So the fifth meaning is you protected. You protected. So love. Now take these meanings, apply it to love. Apply it to love. Love is pure, is bright, is obvious, it's constant, it's constant, it's deep, and it's protected. You care about it. The love. Love. Now, each one of you, each one of you, going to answer this question to herself. No need for people to know. How much my claim of the love of Allah, my claim of the love of Allah, applies to these five criteria. It's pure, pure only for him. It's obvious. Everyone see it on me. Not claim, not words. See it on me, actions. How deep it is. How much I care about it and I protect it and how much it is constant, doesn't change in Ramadan, it's up and after Ramadan goes down. When I am with my friends, I'm different. When I am alone, I'm different. It's constant state, constant state. So basically, basically, in one of the beautiful meanings of love and you apply it to Allah, it says, meaning, it is the pure, feeling that moves the heart that moves the heart that shows up on the body and the heart will not replace it with anything else no other feeling and it's constant with it with him or her and will give the person you love you give him everything that's the love of allah that's the love of allah now how much we really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll share with you a beautiful saying. This is always you hear this saying when anyone talks about the love of Allah. And this is Al-Imam Al-Junaid. Al-Imam Al-Junaid, legendary in piety and legendary in relationship with Allah. And he, there was a group of people sitting in Mecca. And they all, the discussion in the group, look at the discussion, what they talk, and look at us. The discussion is about the love of Allah. And Imam al junaid was the youngest, so he didn't say anything out of respect. So the people said to him, say it. Say, yeah, Iraqi, he's originally from Iraq, like my origin. And he said, okay, you say it. What is, what is... Uh, what is love of Allah for you? Now, love of Allah for you. If you want to write that, write down. I'm going to translate as much as Allah makes it uh, easy for me. And he said, first of all, his eyes were tearing. And he said, they said, talk about love of Allah. He said, love of Allah is a servant, servant, moving away from himself. A servant moving away from himself, connected with the remembrance of his Lord, moving away from himself, connected with the love, with the remembrance of his Lord, standing constantly, fulfilling his duties, fulfilling the duties, his duties and the rights of his Lord, looking to his Lord by his heart. Now, virun ilayhi bi qalbi. Looking at Allah always with your heart. Do you know what does it mean you look to Allah with your heart? There's, there's, no, there's no lenses here, but there's a huge lenses here. 
meaning anything in my life, I say, I do. I don't say, I don't do, is my heart immediately look at Allah and say, Ya Allah, should I do it? Is that pleasing to you? Is that how you want me to do it? Or Ya Allah, this is not something you want me to do. I'm not going to do it. نَاظِرُونَ إِلَيْهِ بِقَلْبِهِ Looking at Allah with his heart. Now, actions. I'm still talking, I'm still uh, uh, translating the statement of Imam Al-Junaid. فَإِن تَكَلَّمَ فَبِاللَّهِ If he speaks or she speaks by Allah. وَإِن نَطَقَ فَعَنِ اللَّهِ The words he utter is about Allah. وَإِن تَحَرَّكَ If he moves by the order of Allah. وَإِن سَكَنَ فَمَعَ اللَّهِ And if he stands still, he is with Allah. فَهُوَ He is by Allah, to Allah, and with Allah. So he is by Allah, for Allah, and with Allah. That's the love of Allah. Where are we? This is the love of Allah. Servant going away from his nafs. You know what that means? My focus is not what I like, what I love, what I wanted, or I'm sad because they didn't do this to me, or I am happy because they did this to me. It's all about me. No. Love of Allah, I am away from all these things. My focus is not to me. My focus is not them. It's not he or she. My focus is him, capital H. Dahibun an nafsi, muttasilun bi dhikri rabbi. He is always connected with him, not by claim, by constant remembrance of him. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, astaghfirullah, la ilaha illallah, ya Allah, I did not give you your due right. Constant. You look at your child and say, alhamdulillah, what a blessing you gave me. Your child become very successful. Alhamdulillah, you made my efforts successful. Everything is related to Allah. Two things. قَائِمٌ بِأَدَاءِ حُقُوقِهِ You fulfill. The person who loves Allah, fulfill the rights of Allah. What is the rights of Allah upon you and me? What is the rights of Allah upon you and me? And our Rasulullah was asked in this, حَقُّ اللَّهِ أَلَّا تُشْرِكَ بِهِ شَيْئًا The right of Allah, you do not associate anything with him. وَمَا حَقُّ اللَّهِ عَلَى وَمَا حَقُّ الْعِبَادِ عَلَى اللَّهِ What is the right of the human being? On Allah, يُدْخِلُهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ If they did that, he will get them to Jannah. What Allah wants from me? لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ That's what he wants from me. And not the tongue. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ No God, no deity, worth of worship, except him. And not by tongue. And not by claim. Rather by action, by action. So muttasilun bi dhikri rabbi, connected with Allah through his dhikr, fulfill Allah's duty, look at Allah with his heart. His heart is focused on Allah, nothing, nothing else. When you speak, by Allah. Words about Allah. Move by Allah. Stay by Allah. He is. This is what I want you to memorize. These last three. فَإِن فَهُوَ that human being. Billah. Allah moves me. Allah moves me. When I first started studying, I used to remember one of my teachers, uh, used, uh, he used to say, I'm not going to do it till Allah show me. And I was like, yeah, Allah, how he's going to show? Me? You know, like for us, I mean, especially I'm talking about for me, I mean, you're a, you're a person who studied medicine, so everything is obvious, so everything is based on evidence. How I'm going to see Allah? And then I'm not going to say or do unless Allah show me. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Once you start this relationship that I shared with you about Imam al-Junaid, you will see it. You will see how Allah will stop you. And you say, I don't know why I can't do this, but I just can't do it. Then you find out it's because what you want to do is not pleasing to Allah. Or you say, I didn't plan anything. It just happened. Because Allah wants you. Now, I'm talking about things that's obedient to him. Th things that is obedient to him. So you are, Billah, by Allah, 
وَلِلَّهِ for Allah everything is for Allah you know what you say I don't want anything from you لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا I don't want any thank you any gratefulness from you I'm doing it all for Allah if people will say جزاك الله خير may Allah reward you thank you الحمد لله if they said nothing الحمد لله and ومع الله you're always with Allah one of my friends just this morning asked me this question and she said what she's subhanallah she was overseas and she got stuck overseas so she's alone and she says i forgot how to speak with the lockdown and then and she said what do you do i said talk to allah talk to allah this is your opportunity you're alone talk to him read his words read his words make your dua you don't have to memorize all duas talk to him ya allah uh, you gave me everything and i didn't do anything for you as simple as this. Ya Allah, please forgive me. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zalimin. The more you do this, the more you start the relationship, he'll pull you. He, he'll pull you and he will show you. Practically. We always want practical. How I'm going to do that? Sister Haifa, this is a beautiful talk. But tell me. Give me one, two, three, four, five. I'll give it to you. How do we? Number one. And it's subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, it is in Ramadan because it's much easier in Ramadan. Number one, number one, you read the Quran with understanding and what Allah wants from you. This is the number one. Qira'atul Quran, reading your word, his words. I had a three year old some time ago asked me, How can Allah talk to us? You know how beautiful these kids? It's so beautiful question. How can Allah talk to me? And I said, yeah. No, she said, does Allah talk to me? And I said, yeah. And she said, how? I said, read the Quran. She said, why? It's his words. Quran, however, having said that, is not tahdirahu hadra. You read it just quickly. So I finished the khatma. Uh, again, very recently, somebody was asking me, so like I do two ajza in a tarawih And I was like, MashaAllah, how long that will take? Two para, as you say it. So about 40 pages of the Quran. Uh, 40 pages in the night, in tarawih And I was like, how long this will take? She said, one hour. One hour? That's reading. You will get the reward of reading, saying the words. But I'm talking about here. Our goal is Allah loves me and I love him. Read it. Take your time. This is what I recommend to everybody who's asking, especially those who don't know the Arabic language. You make it daily in this beautiful month of Ramadan. Whatever Allah time gives you, we are very different. Spend time with understanding the Quran, not only reading. Yani, do only one khatma. Finish it, only one khatma, one para a day. If you read the juz, it takes about an hour if you are just reading. But spend, allocate another time that you will take one page, half a page, one ayah, doesn't matter. I want you to understand it. What is he saying? What is he telling me? What is he telling me? Right? What does he say? Alif, la, mim, dalik al kitabu la rayba fi hudan lil muttaqin. First ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. First verse in the Baqarah, in the cow chapter. This book, la rayba fi, no doubt, hudan, guidance to those who have taqwa. What does it mean? Keep asking this question every day in Ramadan. Pick one ayah. Alhamdulillah, there is plenty of programs now. I will recommend you have to have something alone with Allah. Show him the efforts. It's not just sitting, listening to a video. It's very easy. This is called passive learning. Passive learning is a good start, but it will not change me. What changes me when I put the effort, when I learn today that I need to read the Quran with understanding and from today, not from tomorrow, today, I'm going to allocate 30 minutes or one hour, whatever, allocated. Don't change it. Allocate. See what will happen. See what will happen at the end of Ramadan. You know why? Because you put the effort. What he, subhanahu, will do, will pull you, will make you understand more. Wallah, and I'm sharing this with everybody. When I start memorizing the Quran, I thought I will never be able to do it. 
it's impossible. And a, a good number of my teachers said, that they told me later, of course, but subhanAllah, you keep doing it, you keep doing it and you fail and it's hard and you get up and you do it and Allah gives it to you at the end. So number one, read the Quran. Number two, before I get to two, there is no claim of love of Allah without doing the obligations. There is no. Don't talk about Allah's love, why I love him, why he loves me, why I want to be an Imam al-Junaid and I don't wake up for Fajr. We are claimers. We are basically saying what we don't do. لِمَ تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Why do you say what, do, what you don't do? So number one. Now comes steps. So I'm going to read the Quran with focus. I will pick one, two, whatever Allah opens for you. Number two. To get closer to him. To get closer to him. To get the love, you need to do the extras. In this you will compete. Extras. All the sunan of a salah, all the extra, the non or the voluntary extra salah, two before fajr, salat al duha, two or four before luhur, two or four after luhur, uh, then two, uh, two after maghrib, two after isha. That's first. Then I will graduate. I'm in Ramadan. I'm going to do more. I'm going to do the two before asr. It's not commonly done. I'll do two before maghrib and then my taraweeh. My taraweeh. I do 20, alhamdulillah. Now I'm going to do 20 and I'm going to read more. Or I'm going to do 20 and I'm going to read longer. I'm going to do longer sujood. I'm going to do longer uh, uh, ruku'ah. Graduate. This is what I say always to myself before anyone. You cannot be today, second day of Ramadan. You are exactly the same human being in your relationship with Allah, meaning in your actions, in your deeds with Allah, the same as last year. We are losers. I need to continue. They call it at taqarrubu illallah. Get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by performing number one, his obligations, and then closer is by the extras. And I will share this hadith with you. It's a hadith on Qudsi. Some of you may be familiar with it. I'll get to the questions. Uh, probably I will finish another 10, 15 minutes and then I'll, I'll take some questions. And please forgive me at 2 o'clock. 5 to 2, I have to, uh, to finish. So please forgive me if I cannot stay longer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this hadith on Qudsi, مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَطْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ Nothing will bring the human, my servant, you and me, Closer to me, to Allah, other than what I made obligatory upon him or her. Nothing. I, Allah is saying, nothing will make me. Nothing. Whatever you do, you did not start. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm commenting. You didn't start the journey of love of Allah if there is no obligations. No obligations. Having said that, the obligations is not only do the obligations, is don't also. Salah on time, no backbiting. Siyam of Ramadan, no looking at haram. Giving my zakah, not withholding charity. Right? I'm talking about obligations now. Obligations. So the, the do obligations, Birrul Walidain, excellence treatment to the parents. That's an obligation. Not excellent treatment. لا تقول لهما أف. Don't say أف to them. That's also a don't that I'm not going to do. So the first step, look at your journey and mine with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a road. As a road. GPS. Put it on the GPS. My destination, Allah's love. Where do I start, ya Allah? Right? What do they say? Starting point when you put the GPS. What do they tell you? You put your home address. You put somewhere else. Your start point, you didn't take the journey yet. Your start point is the obligations. Each one of you listening to me, look at obligations that you don't do or uh, haram or disobedient to Allah that you do, these need to be out. Now, but I didn't get to the love of Allah yet. Back to the hadith. ما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء أحب إلي مما افترضته عليه Nothing will bring the servant of, of me close to me other than what I made obligation. 
Okay, next step. I need to get to the love of Allah. Look at what Allah is saying here. Through a Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam in a hadith. وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبُّهُ And my servant continued to do the voluntary, the, acts, the extra actions till I love him. Till I love him. Ah, we're there. How do I know I am there? These are all spiritual stations. How do I know? Allah is saying it. Hatta uhibbu. Okay. Faida ahbabtuh. When I love him, who's speaking? Allah. When I love him, what will happen? Kuntu. Allah saying this. Kuntu. I will be. Sam'uhu alladhi yasma'u bih. I will become his eyesight. I'm sorry. Yeah. Kuntu sam'u. I will, I will be his hearing. وَبَصَرُهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ And his eyesight that he sees with. Alhamdulillah, may Allah reward you, Ya Farzana. You're amazing. I love it. She's making very easy your life. A lot of dua to Farzana before you break your fast. Jannat al-Firdaus, Ya Farzana, all of us. Ala sururin mutaqabilin. We're facing each other in Jannah, on, on couches, everybody. Ya Rabbi, all the Muslims, Ya Rabbi. And everybody on this earth, to become a Muslim and in Jannah. So here you go. She even gave you the narrator. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah the exalted said, I will declare that's the beginning of it. I, uh, I will declare a war against him who shows hostility to a pious worshiper of mine. And the most beloved thing with which my slave comes nearer to me is that what I have enjoined upon him made obligatory and my slave keeps on coming look at this point keeps coming closer to me through performing nawafil extra is not prayers only it's not prayers it's everything and nafila is everything extra you do charity is a nafila uh, 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 smiling in your the face of your sister is a, is a nafila it's a sadaqa so everything extra hatta uhibbu till i love him now what will happen? If I loved him, now the sign, now the action, true. كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به. I become his earrings, his hearings. I'm sorry. Meaning, if Allah is my hearing, I will not be able, I will not be able to hear or listen to haram. Is not I'm struggling. I just can't anymore. I can't anymore because Allah is my hearing. And I am his eyesight. I can't look at haram. I can't see haram, let alone I watch haram, let alone in Ramadan. It's not only good deeds. It's not good deeds. It's higher level. I have in me the sign that Allah loves me. In me, something comes up right away and says, don't do it. This is not pleasing to Allah. And I don't. Then Allah loves me. Or something in me says, go and do it. Allah loves it. Then Allah loves me. Now, the hadith is not done yet. Now, two signs, you know it. Two signs. This is amazing. I loved him. I become his uh, hearings. Now two things. The last two things in the hadith. When he or she ask me. Now who is answering? Allah. I will give him. And the noon of the I will give him. And if he seeks refuge in me. I will give him refuge. I shall be his hearing with which he shall hear, his sight with which he will see, his hands with which he will hold, and his feet, نعم جزاك الله خير, ورجده التي يمشي بها, and his feet which he will shall walk. And if he ask, ask something of me, look at the last word, put your heart in this hadith, I shall surely give it to him. And if he takes refuge in me, I certainly will grant him. 
that's the sign of love. It's not a claim. That's the sign of love. Mm. That I am exactly what Al Imam Al Junaid, what I shared with you. I am by Allah and for Allah and by Allah and with Allah. I say what pleases Him. I hear what pleases Him. I see what pleases Him. I lower my gaze from what He doesn't like. I close my ears for, from what He doesn't want to, be, uh, 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 to hear. And my hands will not write or do something he doesn't like, or will write and do something he likes, and my legs will not walk to any place but to what he loves. And what does he love me to walk to his masajid? May Allah make it open again. And he does not want me to keep going to the markets. Ahabbul biladi illahi masajiduha. The most beloved place to Allah is the his masjid. The meaning of it, the most disliked is al-aswaq, markets, malls. I can't be spending now, alhamdulillah, now alhamdulillah, by not a choice. Allah is pushing us away from the disobedience. But later on, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, will lift this test from all of us. I cannot be, I cannot be claimer. Allah loves me every time I ask, Allah will give me and I do all this. Somebody will say, well, every time I ask Allah, he gives me, and I do not obey Allah. That's very dangerous. That's called in the Islamic terminology, al-istidraj. Allah is pulling you more and more. You know when you gave up on someone? Inshallah, you've never done that. When you gave up on someone, he says, I am done. I am done. I'm not going to do anything. Let them do whatever they want. I'll give them anything they want. So if I and you, may Allah not make us of those who disobey Allah, and then he still gives me, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting me to myself, and he is not interested anymore in me returning to him. So number three, number two, at-taqarrubu ilallah. Number three, steps practical to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constant dhikr of Allah. Constant dhikr, remembrance of Allah. They say the sign of wilaya, of wali, the real alliance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're always in dhikr. Dhikr is reading Quran, dhikr memorizing Quran, dhikr I say astaghfirullah, dhikr alhamdulillah, dhikr subhanallah, dhikr salah, dhikr morning and evening adhkar, constant remembrance. Even when you are with people and if the talk is not about Allah or something to get me close to him, you stay silent but inside you. You know everybody now have these rings that you do a salah ala rasul alayhi salatu wa salam reminds you this needs you to be your heart always dhikrullah number four number four you put what Allah loves ahead 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 from what you love anything Allah loves will take precedent anything Allah loves will be number one Anything Allah loves will be number one, even if what he wants and loves, I don't love. But I'm going to do it for only one reason, because Allah loves it. Where are we? Where are we here? Anything he loves, I do it, although I am not in fond of it, although I don't like it. And then that means things I like, I am not going to do. That's a huge sacrifice, but that's the love of Allah. That's the love of Allah. So number four, number four, you do the things that he loves, even if you don't. Number five, learn, love, and live the names of Allah. Learn, love, and live the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His names and characters is not we only have them as hanged in our homes. Is you know the meaning. What does it mean? Allah ar-Rahman. Allah is the merciful. Meaning with everything I'm seeing, with all this COVID-19 coronavirus, with all the death, with all the lockdown, with all the loss of jobs, loss of um, resources, loss of freedom, all what we are, Allah is still ar-Rahman. He didn't change. He doesn't change. Where is Ar-Rahma, Ya Allah? Ya Allah, I'm not seeing it, but I know it is there. Then you know Allah. 
cannot be, may Allah forgive me. You cannot say, I can't see where is Allah's Rahmah. And how can you tell me Allah Rahman and look what is happening? Then I have not seen him yet. And if I don't know how to do get there, you ask him, show me. Ya Allah, I know you taught me Anta Rahman. Please show me your Rahma. I'm not seeing it. I'm weak. I'm a servant. I know nothing. And Allah taught us these days how insignificant we are, how weak we are, how a small virus that nobody can see shut off the earth that's how i look at it the earth is on lockdown shut off animals are very happy the trees are happy the earth are happy everybody is happy except human beings freedom so ya allah i don't know your names in actions show me ask him in your dua in your witter in your sujood doesn't matter the more you know about allah you start seeing him in his creation. And this is how they teach you in Aqeedah. They say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not show himself subhana to us. But he showed himself to us through his names and attributes. And he didn't teach us his names and attributes directly, rather by his actions. The creation, the beauty, the snow, the rain, the green, the desert. All this at Jamal, Al Jamil. So learn the names of Allah. Learn, love, and most important, live. Live. I have no doubt this is khair for me. This is how you say you say things. I have no doubt. Whatever happens is good because it's coming from Allah. Number six, you see his bounties on you individually. You see his bounties on you. Don't say, don't take everything for granted. Of course, I worked very hard. I studied. No, there's a lot of people who studied very hard, harder than me, but he didn't give it to them. And there is people who studied much harder than me and he gave them more. It is him. Him. إِنَّمَا قَوْلُنَا لِشَيْءٍ إِذَا أَرَدْنَاهُ أَن نَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Allah said this in Surah Al-Nahl, in the bees. إِنَّمَا قَوْلُنَا لِشَيْءٍ Verly. If we say something, if, if we want something to happen, the only thing we need to do is we say, be and it will be. So see the bounties, count your bounties. I had a class very recently, younger people, and I said, count for me 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. Other than you are a Muslim and other than you uh, uh, parents, I can't tell you what it come. One of them was sick. He said, a uh, uh, young man, a very young man, uh, boy actually. And, and he said, it's my disease. He's sick. He said, it's disease, it's a ni'mah. And I said, how come? He said, nobody else has it. That's when you see Allah. You didn't say, why me? You say, he, he gave me this. Because when I get sick and I act with patient, he will reward me. He will reward me. So number six. Number seven. Number seven. You act with Allah as a beggar. You act with Allah as a beggar. In need. Poor. That's your relationship and mine with Allah should be. That's my relationship should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beggar. I have nothing. I can do nothing. It's only in his hand. It's only in his hand. Number eight. I may be going a little bit because I want to give you all this and I give you some time for questions and answers. Number eight. And this especially in Ramadan. Khalwa. Seclusion. Alone. With him only. Seclusion meaning no phone. Seclusion meaning I'm not talking to people. I'm not seeing I'm alone in the house, but I'm not alone. I'm with the TV. I am with the internet. I'm with the YouTube. I'm with the phone. No, 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 no. Seclusion. And this is the best time this year. And actually, I called Ramadan. I gave it a nickname. I called Ramadan al-Khalwa. It's the Ramadan of seclusion. Because you're not seeing people, no parties, no invitations, not even taraweeh and masjid. It is you and you. With your family also, but also your family will go, everyone will go to their room at one point. Seclusion, spend time with him. 
just spend time, just sit down and talk to him. Just think, think of something beautiful you have seen. If you have, if you just delivered the baby, look at the beauty of the baby. Look at the beauty of the baby and, and, and see. Number nine, company. Peer pressure, subhanAllah, everywhere. This peer pressure title applies. You spend your time with the righteous people. Don't spend your time with the not righteous people. Those who are heedless, they will pull you away. You want to be with people who will lift you up. You want to, with, to be with people who will say, oh, you only do 10 taraweeh? You only make one hour in Ramadan? I don't want people to say, oh, mashallah, you do. No, no, I want people to lift me up. I want people, when I sit with them, they remind me of Allah. When I see them, they remind me of Allah. Mujalasatul Salihin, they say, spending time, companionship is your righteous people, whether on the phone, whether on the groups, whether on the social media, whether in person. People I choose, these are not, I'm not talking about family. Family, we have no choice, but I'm talking about I choose them. These are the people who will bring me closer to Allah. Number 10, and this will be the last one, that number 10, stay away from anything that will prevent you or will put a curtain or a hijab or a barrier between you and Allah. وَعَلَّمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَأَنَّهُ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ Allah said this in Surah Al-Anfal. And know, know that Allah can put a barrier between you and Him. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَجِيبُوا لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحِيكُمْ This is how the ayah starts. Oh, believer, respond to Allah when He calls you to what revive your heart. And what, when He calls you and the Rasul والسلام, calls you to revive your heart. And scholars tells you, number one, it's the Quran and His orders. وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّوْا Allah will put the barrier, can put the barrier, or a hijab, yahul, ha'il, basically ha'il is when you put a parda, Allah can put a barrier, so move everything that will put a barrier, a number one barrier that I put and you put between me and Allah is sins, disobedient, don't do that. Don't do that. Stay away from sins because there is no love of Allah with sins. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ulayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi tasliman kathira. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward everyone who worked on this in London and in the uh, US. I ask everybody who gave us one hour of her time in Ramadan or his time in Ramadan to listen to us. May Allah reward you. May Allah make me worthy of saying the words that I say. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me before anyone else that we practice what we learned and what we teach each and all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the righteous deed that any one of us will do or anybody on this world to lift this test and bring us out of this test and trial much better, much purer, much closer to him. Ya Rabbi Ameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Are we okay to do questions now? Yes. Okay. We have plenty, but you choose. Okay, so one of the first questions is, what is your advice on fasting while nursing an eight-week-year-old baby? With a, with a eight weeks old baby? Yes. Is she breastfeeding? Um, it doesn't say. But I think maybe we could open the question up to what would your advice be on fasting if you have children? What well, are the responsibilities? Well, the, the, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you go, um, go back to the origin um, um, ayah of Surat al Baqarah about the fasting. And you can go back. We did last week, actually, last Sunday, two hours on the uh, fasting. How do I make Ramadan best ever? How do I actually, it was titled Ramadan, my gate to Jannah. It's on our uh, website um, and it's on our social media or, and it's on YouTube channel. You can listen to it. And we covered one, one of these things. In general, if the nursing woman or the pregnant woman, it's the same ruling. If fasting affect her, 
I fuck the breast, I fucked her, I fucked the baby, then the answer is yes, she can break her fast and she makes it up later on. If there is no excuse, honestly, there is nothing. She's absolutely fine. She's, she normally fasts and fasting is not a, a big thing for her. Then she should fast. So this is something between you and Allah. This is something between you and Allah and you know your ability, but also don't be too hard on yourself because it's Ramadan and I have to know. Allah gave you the permission and the permission or concession is actually in Ramadan. And one of the things, again, in our planner is inna Allah yuhibbu an tu'ta rukhasa. Allah loves those who take his concessions. Uh, having said that, don't take it very lightly also. See, can you do it? And if you can do it, alhamdulillah, if you cannot, you cannot. Or is the other one? Yeah, for Zana. Um, the next question is, what is the best way to call to Allah for help? Yeah, ya Mu'in, a'inni. It depends what kind of a help. And the best way to call for Allah, call him by his names. So I need money. Ya Razzaq, rizuqni. Ya Allah, the one who are the sustainer, please sust give me sustenance. I'm sick. And I need to get better. Ya Shafi. Allahumma dhal ba'as rabbin nas. Ashfi wa anta shafi. Ya Allah, the Lord of people. You are the one who cure. Cure me. The best way to call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, before I even say this, now I remember the very nice saying. I think it's Imam Ahmed. But if, I, if I'm wrong, please correct me. He said, he was asked this question. He said, the best way to call Allah, call him with sincerity from your heart. Sincere from your heart. Think of yourself, and this is a beautiful concept I learned, that you are, and every time I feel I'm away from Allah, I bring this concept back. You're in the middle of the ocean, and you do not know how to swim. You're in the middle of the ocean, and you don't know how to swim. You're about to, draw, uh, to uh, die, and you're holding to a piece of a wood in the middle of the ocean, nobody in the dark. How you will call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What's your dua? How are you going to say, Ya Allah, nobody will save me except you? Something like that. This is how you answer. One more question, and we should end, uh, Ya Farzan. Let me see what questions we have. Another person has said, Can you give examples of how to see his bounties? Yeah, absolutely. Very easy. Anytime you walk in the street and you see somebody on a wheelchair, or a picture of somebody on a wheelchair or on crutches, what's the bounties on you and me? What's the bounty on you and me? I'm walking. You see somebody blind, and you're walk and you and you are seeing. That's a bounty. Even easier. I, we are where I live in St. Louis. We are heading to May, and May usually is the month that we get a lot of thunderstorms. And sometimes, not uncommon, we lose electricity because we have big trees and from the thunderstorms, the trees may fall on the electric lines and then we lose it and we become completely dark. We don't see anything. You can't even cook. The freezer or the fridge is not working. What bounties we had? And then when the light come back again, you say, Alhamdulillah. That's why. And there's a dua. I'm glad this question comes in. There's a dua. I'm not sure if it's of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, but it says, Allahumma la tu'arifna ni'amaka bi zawaliha. Ya Allah, don't teach me and show me your bounties by taking them away. What bounty now we had and he took it away? Freedom, work, safety, health. We all had it daily. We didn't look at it. Here you go. He sent Corona to remind us that I can keep you in the house. I can cover your face. I can push you to put niqab. I'm going to push you not to shake hands. So subhanallah. Jazakumullahu khairan. One last thing I want to also share with everybody. We run classes. We will run it again after Ramadan. We do classes and you go on our website, jannainstitute.com, jannainstitute.com. And we do classes on Saturday morning. It's 8 o'clock St. Louis time, which is about 2 o'clock London time. And everybody else, you figure out the time. And this we do, the class is specifically about how do I learn, love, and live the Quran. 
We started with Juzu Amna. It's all recorded, and you can join line, online live, or if you cannot for whatever the reason, then the recording will be sent to you. And on Sunday, we do classes, Taskiyah, purification of the heart. And that's 7 o'clock on a Sunday. Jazakumullah